party verifications. Okay, that sounds super good. Um, I'm gonna grab one more thing. I'm gonna make sure my phone is plugged in so it doesn't die. So one quick second. One thing we've learned is you got to learn, be able to improvise sometimes with the internet. Mine was giving trouble this morning as well, and uh, but I didn't have as much trouble as Deanna. So, you know, the greatest thing in the world is that there's 160 of us sitting right here. Many of us uh, probably still in our pajamas, maybe one eye on the TV, uh, on our recliner, in our chair. Some of us may be driving down the road. Um, the presenters, I'm, I'm actually at a football game in Virginia that's starting in about 90 minutes. So I'm, I'm just kind of stationarily set up in a hotel room. But we're doing that, and we can all create millions in the process. It's just the neatest thing since sliced bread, how the world has changed and allowed us to build an absolute multi-million dollar empire from home. Deanna, you're back with us. Yeah, and I heard you, and quite frankly, I should still be in my pajamas, because something about me that you all don't know is I am much more of an evening person than a morning person. So, you know, I might have had a few negative thoughts. I like to think I'm a positive person this morning at 545 when my alarm went off, and then, but here I am. And so, okay, let me give you a little bit of background, and then let's... Um, talk about what the seal of approval means. And then Todd, I'll have you keep me kind of on task on the topics you'd like me to talk about, okay? But my background, like I, I thought I was gonna be an academic and I was gonna be at the top of my field in academia. And, um, and then everything kind of switched for me. And it switched because of life experience. And I really, hold true to the belief that when you have a life experience that is life altering, um, it can turn into a calling. And that's kind of like what happened to me. And when I say that, you know, just to give you like the, the 10 second version, being, you know, 60 pounds overweight, being 11 year bulimic, being addicted to pharmaceutical medicines, having a whole host of health problems, my family having a whole host of health problems, and being raised with a family that, you know, taking many prescriptions, drugs was just the way of life. You know, that was just normal in my life. And then I had a life altering experience that made me realize, oh, hey, that is normal, but that isn't natural. And, and over the years, becoming very clear on this fact, it is normal to die young. And when I say young, science knows our body can easily make it to 100 and past. Our bodies can do this, but it's normal to die young. It's normal to die of cancer and heart disease and high blood pressure. And it's normal to um, be overweight. And it's no normal to be on lots of pharmaceutical medicines. And it's normal to wake up and not feel good. But it isn't natural. And it's a direct reflection of how we're choosing to live our life. And so I had that kind of aha moment in my life when I was teaching at San Francisco State University, had a dramatic change in, in my daily habits. And, and just to give you an idea, I was addicted to Pepsi, McDonald's every day, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. I mean, I really kind of like had, had this kind of American fast food diet. And, but remember, I was normal. I, I didn't think I had a problem, even as an 11 year bulimic. And so after having a huge change in my own life, uh, finishing graduate school and then changing my focus towards nutrition, um, I decided I would put my two loves together. And my loves were debate, advanced public speaking. I loved research and education. And I would put those two things together and I would go out and I would become a professional speaker because a lot of people needed to know that they have a choice and just with a little bit of education or a few changes in their lifestyle, they could dramatically impact the longevity of their life. And I wanted to make sure that people understood that. And I was told I'd never make it. Advanced public speaking is a man's world. You know, all the big six-figure speakers are men. Good luck. No one will hire you. 
And the first year sucked being an entrepreneur, made no money. Second year totally sucked, made no money. And uh, halfway through the third year, I quickly became the number one spe speaker in um, the college market, booking more gigs, speaking in front of college and colleges and university than any of my counterparts. And then that moved on to a 17 year career working with everything from the US military to the banking system to AT&T to Xerox and everything kind of in between. And I was really blessed to to have this life where I could fly in and work with an audience and uh, be fortunate enough to uh, have them um, listen to me and 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 give a give a talk where I thought if there was just one thing people did when they walked out of the room from hearing me speak that 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 could have a huge ripple effect. So that was 17 years, and then um, nine years ago I I met these kind of crazy guys in Utah who were out to do, to do something different in, in the direct sales industry and do something uh, revolutionary, do something where people really truly own their own businesses. And I became the final partner in that company, the only female, the only one from California. <laughs> and I came in to run all the products and product development. And, um, and I came in with not your corporate background. I didn't have that. I came in and I was like, I had one goal that if somebody spent a dollar with us in one of our products, that they would get all that value and more. Because you see, when you look out there in the world of supplementation, there is so much bull crap. And what I mean by bull crap is is come, there's not many much oversight or regulation. The industry supplementation kind of regulates itself. Well, that's a dangerous situation. And what ends up happening is you have products that are on the shelf on very large stores in your Walmarts, your Targets, your Costco's, and you have um, you have all these these products out there. I mean, rows and rows of products, and a lot of them are just um, uh, lying because there's no oversight and um, lying in, in, in this way. They'll say there's 200 milligrams of vitamin C and really there's only 10. And I'm not the only one that says this. Uh, the, it's funny, the, um, the attorney general of New York State um, several years back went and pulled 800 products, well-known national brands, off the shelf of Costco, Target, and Walmart and tested them, and eight out of 10 failed. Eight out of 10. So people sometimes say to me like, oh, your products, I don't know, they're kind of expensive. And my response is always like, you're welcome. You know, because when, when, when you, sure, you might go save $4 buying this product that looks the same, sometimes on the label, but I wouldn't touch that thing with a 10 foot, full, 10, uh, foot pole because they do not have the oversight and regulation. So what makes us different and what makes the RX quality seal of approval different is, is transparency in the chain. So what does that mean? Transparency in the chain means that where do we get our raw materials? How are those raw materials grown and processed? How are they tested? Then an additional transparency in the chain means, oh, the raw materials are in our facility. Let's test them again to make sure their test matches our test because we buy from 300 farmers from all over the world. So we'd like to think everybody's on the up and up, but it's not always the truth. And so uh, let's double test to make sure that what they're saying is totally true. And then let's make the product. And then when we have the finished good, let's test again. And just so you know, that is millions of dollars in testing. And you think like, oh, let's end with that. No, let's do something else, even one more step ahead of that. And let's go to third party organizations like um, NSF, uh, like the Glycemic Index uh, Institute, like, like, um, uh, consumers Lab. Let's go to third-party interests, uh, third-party watchdog groups, have them test our products to verify that everything we're doing is on the up and up and legit. So this is what I tell people that want to buy one of our products. 
It is what it, we say it is on the label, which is so much rarer than you could ever imagine in the supplement industry. It is what it is, what it says on the label. You get your money's worth when you buy it. Um, our products are free of impurities and our products meet label date and label claims all the way up to the expiration date. And we have taken steps on our side to think of every itty bitty little teeny nuance. And when I say that is, what can we add in to increase bioavailability? What type of capsule do we need? What type of, I mean, all of these little things. I believe the devil is in the details. So the more we can be attached to the details, the better the product will be for you and the more consistent the results will be. And what we have found over the nine years as we get results, and the results are amazing and the results are consistent. So Dieta, moving into that, we have, um, we're going to go through a number of products this morning, but a lot of our teams start with, um, transformation slash experience packs now the new lucium pack we had deb up in canada trained on lucium last week so we won't pull a lot of information from you on that we will ask something at the end though but this is one of our more popular packs either this with the 5x or without so if you don't mind what we'd love for you to do is we're just going to walk through each of these products how you formulate